I think what I'm doing really means a lot to me right now because I know that I've seen like a bunch of little girls going, oh, I want to lift heavy weights, I want to be strong like Lauren, and it really means a lot to see that more girls are being okay with being healthy and eating and being fit in their lives and just going out and living a healthy lifestyle. So if I can like change people's lives while I'm doing this, I, it, mean, it means a lot. Well, in terms of in terms of CrossFit or anything else, I'd say her work ethic and character. That you can't build an athlete on a shaky foundation. This girl is competitive. She she knows what she wants, and she's not afraid to work for it. I'm like, these are good signs. But then after that, you know, getting her into the gym, we train at 7 a.m. on Saturday mornings with my most competitive athletes, and we do it partly because. I want to know if they're going to get out of bed. She's a freshman in college, you know, the first year down here, and uh, she never missed a session. She was always here. She always trained hard, and I, I think that's been true for the last two years. I can't think of a time that she's, you know, ever not been in the gym and uh, and working really hard. I uh, started off working a uh, jerk technique drills just to work on my footwork. It was supposed to build up to a heavy, today's heavy uh, jerk, and she built to a new PR of 115 kilos. Fail jerks, I'm it's because my dip is a little bit forward, and so the weight is a little bit forward, and then I just think my torso gets a little bit forward, and so I kind of over overextend. So it's like the same thing every time. I just have to make sure that my bar path is straight and my uh, dip is straight. So when she stays back on her heels, when she keeps her chest nice and vertical, and that bar path vertical on the dip, I I know within you know the moment that she gets to the bottom of her dip, whether she's gonna make the jerk or not. Um, yeah, I am. I pr my uh, shoulder to overhead my jerk, so that was a three kilo PR. So I'm really happy with that. Means my clean and jerk might be going up. Uh, 117 I missed, but it's definitely there next time. Maybe even like 120 uh, kilos. So I think 118 might be double body weight almost. 120 for sure will be double body weight. Sure. So the uh, workout you're going to do, you're going to go, uh, it's going to be 20 pull ups, 20, uh, 20 strict handstand push ups. 
Or no, sorry, we're doing 20, 15, 20, 15 parallel, and then 20 and uh, 30 uh, regular kipping. I think my goal is to stay unbroken, like on the pull ups, and most likely unbroken on the handstand push ups. We'll see about the parallel handstand push ups. I'll probably have to split that up once, but kind of just go after it. I don't really have a plan. Three, two, one, yep. Yeah, that was just more skill work than anything. Um, I wanted her to get practice with three different types of uh, handstand push-ups. So she did some parallel handstand push-ups, strict handstand push-ups, and uh, kipping, regular kipping handstand push-ups. Um, I thought it was it was good. It showed what we've been working on. We've been working a lot on strict, a lot on deficit, not much at all on regular kipping, um, which I don't like personally as a coach. I don't program a lot because I think it's really hard on their necks. And for Lauren in particular, she hates doing uh, regular uh, kipping handstand pushups because every time she comes down, impact on her head and neck um, bothers her neck. I think it was mainly just the parallel handstand push-ups. Um, my shoulders got fatigued. Um, usually, hand, uh, they'll slow me down. Usually, those don't really slow me down. My shoulders are just tired. I think going into those, so it's like the biggest part that slowed me down. I thought she was not bad on the parallels, considering she started with strict handstand push-ups. So she had done 20 strict handstand push-ups unbroken prior to going to the parallettes. Um, so I, I thought she was okay on the parallettes. going to train in at 7 a.m. and then once I finish training I have to hurry and like make breakfast for myself and then from there I go to class from 10 to 11:40. so I'm sitting in class for two hours after I just got done training so it's not the really the place I want to be after sweating all that time and then from there I had to go straight to the beach to do my beach workout um, and then usually after that I'll eat and then probably rest again and go train again. But today, that was a long beach workout, so I'm done for the day. So I eat basically the same thing, like every single day. Yeah, I have three eggs with veggies. I'll have sausage or bacon, and then I make my oatmeal, so I'll add a scoop of almond butter, heavy cream, some sort of berry in it, and like I'll have a banana. Breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. Before training, I had a perfect bar, so those perfect foods bars, and then um, just like some tea. I don't drink, that was tea I was drinking earlier, that wasn't coffee, I don't drink coffee. I'm never like tr really watching my weight, like if I gain weight, I'm okay with it. And if I lose weight, I'm not okay with it. So, um, I mean, I eat exactly the same. I think during rest days, I'm probably not as hungry, but I still try to eat like the same amount. And then maybe if I'm done competing, I'll go and have like a lot of, I'll probably eat really bad for the next week, full of cheat meals. Actually, I might end up having a cheat meal every single day and night, some sort of dessert or something. My favorite cheat meal has to be probably milkshakes. I also, I have so many dessert cheat meals that I could say. I, I like cupcakes, pies, basically anything. If a dessert's sitting in front of me, I'm gonna eat it. Um, when I'm traveling, I, I try to, usually we end up getting hotels where we can cook our own meals. Um, we have a, Team mom Karen, she makes all our meals like at regionals or and games. So 
we're very lucky to have her. Um, so she cooks most of our meals, so we eat basically the same. Like, we have the same exact food, um, so our diets really don't change. But if I'm traveling by myself, I most likely will bring, like, baby food, or I'll bring bars and, like, protein, and then I'll just try to, I'll try to find a place where I can uh, eat semi-clean, semi-paleo-ish, or I'll just end up having pizza or whatever I feel like eating. For lunch, I usually go and I'll have like maybe a salad with like chicken or meat on it, some sort of meat. Um, I also, like after I'm working out, so I've already worked out maybe like once or twice and I'll have like a protein shake and a sweet potato with that. So I probably already had like two sweet potatoes and two protein sh shakes by the time I get to dinner. And then dinner, I'll have like some sort of meat again and maybe some sort of carb, so rice or sweet potato, and I'll have veggies with it, um, and like avocado. I usually put so much veggies that it's like overflowing over the pan. So kale, bell peppers, and onions. Sometimes I'll, I'll do spinach instead of the kale. Um, I usually always have bell peppers in my breakfast. I'm majoring in business. So after I take the summer school class, either uh, business entrepreneurship or um, business mar uh, marketing. I basically eat whenever I'm hungry. I don't really have a set diet. I mean, I eat clean. I eat paleo, I eat meat. Uh, fruit, nuts, vegetables, but I also add in carbs because that's what the paleo diet is missing. So I add in rice, oats, potatoes. Um, I always take those post-workout and then obviously like your pure pharma, like omega-3s and magnesium. So I eat, I have a clean diet, but I also enjoy cheat meals whenever I feel like it. It's not a one size fits all. So every athlete has a little bit different needs. Lauren, uh, yeah, you know, I got Lauren eating as much as she can on most days. Uh, overall principles though are they eat very clean, kind of a paleo primal-esque uh, diet, except right after a workout we give them a nice dose of carbohydrates, a large dose of carbohydrates, and then we use uh, we use insulin uh, to our advantage when we want it by giving them a lot more carbohydrates later on. It was amazing to represent uh, the United States of America, just to have that like on my team uniform and just to even have that honor to represent your country, I think is one of like the big, biggest achievements I have accomplished so far. As a weightlifter, Lauren is extremely talented. Um, the, the head coach, Zygmunt, uh, just thinks the world of her and every time we're around just begs and begs that she come uh, commit full time to weightlifting. She loves being a multi-dimensional athlete. I don't think that she would ever commit just to weightlifting. She's doing really well. She's ex excelling in weightlifting, training the way she is training. And so I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's out of the question that she could qualify for the Olympics, um, doing exactly what she's been doing. Because most kids they work so hard, like going into they work hard hard their whole life just to make it to that point. And so I kind of was lucky to be able to do that in such a short time. I've only been doing weightlifting for two years, so it really meant a lot to me. under pressure situations like I played sports my whole life growing up so I'm always used to playing in front of large crowds 
So the pressure really doesn't bother me that much as it would other people might. <laughs> yeah, today's wor workout was pretty fun. We, um, we did a little swim run over in Coronado. Um, so they did a, a swim that I think worked out to be about a 1.3 mile swim um, from one side of Coronado across to the other side under the bridge. Uh, and then they ran back 4.6 miles. All right, crew, are you ready? Yeah. So let's talk about how this is going to go, okay? Um, you guys start here, right? Careful on your water entry. There's some rocks and stuff, so just be careful on your water entry. Getting in, once you start swimming, you should be fine, all right? All right. Remember, this is training, okay? You guys have to be safe as the number one, right? I want you guys to push yourselves and compete a little bit, but I also want you to stay together to the extent, like it, if somebody's dropping back, Lindsay will hold them. If you guys are just kind of moving as a pack across the channel, that's much better just because there are boats that come in and out. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Safe beach entry. I thought she did really well. She, um, she's a strong swimmer, so she swam well. Um, she stayed at the head of the pack for all the females. She stayed right with Dan on the swim. And then um, on the run, I thought she had a good pace. Um, I think that uh, yeah, she got there's there was another really strong runner with Kristen Holt, um, and so uh, she wasn't able to match Kristen. But I thought her pace was great, and I thought her overall time was really strong today. Lauren swims really well. We swim every Thursday. That's their like their off day activity. I love doing that type that type of stuff, like running on the beach, swimming in the ocean, any of that. Shoot, if I could recreate days like today every day, that would be my ultimate goal. I, I do a lot of online coaching. Um, Lauren's, you know, Lauren's special to me because I, she's in the gym multiple times every single day. I've spent the better part of two years with her. Um, and what I'd love is, you know, these last several days and for the rest of the week, I've got, you know, eight, nine people in town and I'd love to be able to coach 20 of my athletes in town every day. Um, that would be amazing. So if I had a if I had a, a dream scenario, it would be less online coaching, more people in my gym that I could help kind of get to where they want to be. In the off season, I train twice a day. So I train a morning session. I'll do some sort of conditioning and then I'll train an afternoon session around like two hours, like strength, gymnastics, and a workout. So twice a day. Michelle, you just finished a long ass swim and crushed that run. I want to have my run split. That was fast. <laughs> so a lot of times, yeah, she'll come in early. She'd do her, you know, longer aerobic work or um, she'd do some bodybuilding sessions and then she'd come in at one and train with the team and the rest of our competitive athletes. Um, and that would be varied. It was normally a weight, you know, some weightlifting elements um, and then into some conditioning pieces and then maybe some accessory work finisher. Um, so that would be a pretty typical day for her. Our, yeah, my goal for Lauren is not to necessarily that she wins the CrossFit Games this year. She's 20 years old. She just turned 20 years old. Um, and you know, as a first year CrossFit Games athlete, it's very difficult to stand on that podium. There's a lot that you have to overcome and learn. And um, so part of this is a, is a process. Um, I want her to go out there and I want her to compete 
and uh, not afraid of her to making mistakes out there this year. I think those are going to be mistakes that she's going to learn from. But I have no doubt that you will see Lauren Fisher on a podium in the next couple of years because I think that she has, I think she has the right mindset and she's got the physical talent to do it. And so it may be that this year one is a learning process, and uh, but I wouldn't count her out in the next couple years to make that jump faster than people would expect. Ten years, I will be 30 years old. I hopefully I've won the CrossFit Games maybe one or two times, and maybe I've gone to the Olympics for weightlifting, and maybe starting to find like that significant other who I can start like my life with, maybe. Yeah.